Thank you, Ricky. And uh, thank, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. Um, hello from your neighbors to the east here, I guess. Uh, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about POS and what's happening in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, and uh, talk about really potential for collaboration because I think that's, as you'll see what we're, I'm going to talk about, uh, the collaboration uh, could really help get us over the next step in, in, in uh, expanding the industry here. So just a quick overview because I may not get through it all. Um, uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the industry in Saskatchewan, our R&D facilities that are available, and focus on three, the University of Saskatchewan, POS, and the Saskatchewan Food Industry Development Centre. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get to the R&D innovation areas, but it's in my slides if I don't make it there, and you can follow up with it uh, in the future. So the industry in Saskatchewan, uh, first of all, oil seeds. We're in canola country, just like we are in Alberta here. Uh, and with that, we have uh, four main uh, large oil crushing plants. Uh, we have the main, the main ones there. The largest one in Canada is just outside of Saskatoon, uh, the Cargill plant, a capacity of 4,500 tons per day uh, is what they can crush. We have grains, uh, pulse crops, uh, very large in pulse crops, mainly in the shipping it out as commodities, not adding value, and that's, uh, that's a big, big, uh, uh, I guess a big, a, a, a big gap to fill yet. Uh, beef, poultry, and uh, native fruits. The native fruit industry, Saskatoon berries, uh, sea buckthorn, they really are, there are some small producers there, uh, but they are making headway and actually have some interest uh, from Europe for the Saskatoon berry processing, uh, processed extracts. Meat processing, generally our processors are very, quite, quite small in Saskatchewan. Um, uh, we do have some specialty oil companies like Bioriginal uh, Specialty Distributing. They bring oils in, including fish oils that they harvest uh, from down in Peru, for example, blend them and ship them out, and they uh, do have a global presence, actually. But the future, uh, as identified by the Saskatchewan government, and I think we can all agree as, as Canadians, is, is to increase, uh, uh, we'd ha we have a gap in value-added processing. And that has been the mandate of the Department of Agriculture, the Ministry of the Economy, and Innovation Saskatchewan recently. They've talked about that. POS, just so you know, is, is a private company now, so, but we look at the government as a, as a potential client, and obviously some of our clients get their funding from the government. But it also is, is a benefit to us to, to work with them, obviously, and uh, grow the whole industry. So it's very nice to see the value-added processing initiative by the government. And they want to attract companies uh, to build processing facilities in Saskatchewan uh, and the, I would say the prairies. Uh, develop the fruit and vegetable industry, which uh, that's another initiative that uh, is, is starting to emerge. But, but the key, and that really, uh, they, 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 I guess they put out the challenge. Uh, some of us in the, the, in the technical area are now starting to realize the benefits of collaboration. I uh, appreciated Jerry Boma's uh, presentation and his, his, his uh, words about DARPA. We've worked on three different uh, DARPA programs in the past, and it's amazing. They, they pull you down there quarterly in the technical groups. We may be working with Texas A&M. We're downstream from them, and they force dialogue. Uh, they have very effective people to force dialogue that sometimes ask um, difficult questions for technical people because it's out of your area, but what are you doing to help the person down, downstream uh, focus on, on the goal objectives of this program? So it changed our way of thinking, certainly at POS, um, and opened us up to more dialogue with, uh, with our collab potential collaborators around Saskatchewan and actually further than that globally. So again, what we have, uh, uh, in addition to the three groups I'm, I'm about to talk to, though, we have Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada is in Saskatoon. They have a plant development uh, centre as well as a, um, a process development group. We have the National Research Council, a very well-known plant biotechnology institute. Uh, they've opened up their labs somewhat, and uh, we are able to access them even for some of the analytical services and molecular structure determination. Uh, that's a big area for us right now. We're getting into different areas, microalgae, for example, uh, and new, new plant, new seeds, and uh, we have new peaks on the chromatogram. Basically, we need help identifying what those compounds are. We're not doing that at POS, but there are facilities uh, locally in Saskatoon to do that, such as the Canadian Light Source, 
And um, that's a high intensity light source. I won't go into the details, but it's good for uh, determining microstructure and uh, uh, chemical uh, composition. Saskatchewan Research Council, they really have pulled away that, that facility from uh, food and the food area, uh, but they used to have a fermentation lab. Um, they've closed that down. There's a big gap in Canada in general for fermentation, and uh, that's where Alberta Innovates is, uh, is very well revered. Uh, they have a good history. We send a lot of clients there, but um, I, truthfully, I think sometimes they've, uh, they're turned away because they just don't have the uh, uh, capacity for them. Saskatchewan Structural Sciences Centre is a uh, branch of the University of Saskatchewan Chemistry Department and really they're about uh, molecular structure determination. But the collaboration with other facilities, we have clients from Alberta. We send clients um, back to Alberta as well. Um, and uh, I've, I've talked a little about the benefits that you can get a lot more. Uh, you want to increase the chance of success and that's where the collaboration really helps. So what we've done we have an agri-food cluster which has been named, it's, it's not, a, not a very, maybe an innovative name, it makes sense, but um, there's three companies and that's the Food Center, POS, and the University of Saskatchewan. And uh, we mainly re work through the research chairs there, which is government funded, and they have specialists, and one of their mandates is, is to work with the industry. So they've actually reached out to us in, uh, in working on programs and it's been quite, uh, quite effective. They have a meat processing lab, bioprocessing lab, and sensory evaluation lab. They specialize in, uh, there's some of their specialties that we work with would be in food chemistry, food and health, biotechnology, and food processing, both meat and crop sciences. A quick, quick overview of POS. Again, we are a fee-for-service private company for the development of ingredients at the pilot scale. We work with entrepreneurs to multinationals, and we take a concept uh, and can develop at the laboratory scale for about two kgs samples and understand the uh, effects of processing on the ingredient and then move to the mini pilot which might be a pilot for a, 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 a university lab for example and then we go to our pilot plant which would be we're producing samples of 200 kilograms to tons in a week and uh, it's a fairly large facility I'll show you some quick pictures uh, and the reason for that, that is it is scalable so the information that's taken from our pilot plant is scalable you can plug it into a pro forma budget uh, with some uh, accuracy for commercialization. Uh, we do offer toll processing prior to commercialization. Dry processing, there we can, uh, in this area, we crush oil seeds, we can mill grains and legumes, uh, and dry separation, some air classification, and some um, uh, screening. Wet extraction, basically protein concentrates, isolates, uh, fruit extracts, and uh, we also have dryers in that area as well for producing dried ingredients. Uh, solvent extraction area is quite unique uh, in North America, not just in, in, in uh, Canada, but uh, where we can work with maybe 10 tons of solvent in a week and solvent extract using typical oil seed extraction, such as using hexane. We can work with alcohols to produce tinctures, and we prepare uh, biomass extraction, such as the microalgae industry or other agricultural feedstock. Oils refining, bleaching, deodorizing, we can take an oil and uh, take it uh, from, uh, to the uh, food and nutraceutical grade state. Uh, just in general, what we talk about, and when we talk about fractionation, higher value ingredients is taking a feedstock, agricultural feedstock, extracting the ingredients such as the oil and the protein, but now fractionation um, opposed to the early 90s when it might have meant let's take the starch, the protein, and the fiber and do something with it. Uh, now we're taking the oil and say let's, let's run that through a molecular distillation system, uh, pull off a high, high unsaturated fraction uh, for maybe a nutritional lipid in that, that maybe is in 10 times the value of what, it, what the oil is. And then take the uh, saturated fat fraction and maybe that can be, um, has some, a little higher value for formulation into something like a, um, a uh, uh, no, no trans margarine. Just wanna quickly discuss the food center uh, who we also co um, collaborate with. And uh, I, I just wanna say that uh, the food center in Saskatoon has been, has got a lot of good guidance from the food center in Leduc, and uh, they, they mention it often, speak of uh, Ken Gossen and his team and how much uh, benefit they've been in their guidance uh, for what to do in the food center in, in Saskatchewan. But their product development center, very much, uh, you know, in, in some ways, in some, t some ways a little different, but there's, you know, a lot of room for complement. Uh, it's, not, it's not all 
and I, I don't think there is any real competition because if we have two extruders in Western Canada, that's not enough. There's a, a big demand. Um, so product development, uh, work with a variety of sectors, sensory evaluation. Uh, one thing they do is reach out and also do, um, I'm just done here, um, uh, food uh, safety courses, and they have an online safety course, for example, and has up a quality assurance programs. Interim processing, much like the food center here, and they are moving to a new facility in about a year and a half, and uh, uh, like the center here, they've seen the benefits uh, that's been shared by Ken and the benefits of an incubator. So there will be an incubator for two spots in, uh, in Saskatoon. Extrusion technology I mentioned, and um, I'm not going to go into the areas of innovation in Saskatchewan other than to tell you that it is along this line of uh, higher value, natural ingredients, clean label ingredients, and what you can do, how you can formulate them into products. So uh, I'm not going to go through these areas of slides. You can catch up with them uh, later. Thank you.